everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you how I got a grade 9 in GCSE Maths and GCSE Further Maths. For context, I did AQA GCSE Maths and I did AQA GCSE Further Maths as well. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we'll start with tip number one, which I think is so, so underrated. I feel like I've had no one talk about this. With maths, it's really important to do little and often every day because it's really hard to like cram it all in one go, especially if all the concepts don't make like a hundred percent sense in your brain so what i would recommend doing is doing the five a day on the corbett maths website you may or may not have heard of this website but basically there's so many resources on there and one of them is five a day questions which is basically for each day of the year there's five questions allocated for that day and i think this is so cool because it's all random topics so it helps you cover as much of the curriculum as possible and also it's just five questions so doesn't feel like you're doing a really long task and that's something that always demotivated me if i felt like i was going to have to do an hour of maths i would just end up not doing it because an hour seems so long but with five questions technically that should take you like five ten minutes maybe a little bit more depending on the question itself so usually what i would do i would try and do this before school if i had time but sometimes i would not have time so i'd try and do it like maybe during break or lunch if i had any time during my school day if not i would do it like right after school and I would try and like get my five questions for GCSE maths and five questions for further maths done. So it felt like I was doing maths like every day, which was really good because in the run up to exams, I felt like I didn't have to revise as much for those subjects because throughout year 11, I had pretty much every day done like 10 questions for both of those subjects. I would then mark my answers, obviously, and then I would go over the topic if I got it wrong. And before the end of the day, I would have gone over the topics that I got wrong, even if it was just like watching a video on them and trying to do like another question on it or something. Shouldn't be like something that's taking too long. Like you don't have to take an hour to understand some things. So it's still like manageable, I would say. And therefore it helped me like learn all the topics that I was like kind of unsure of because it would come up in the five a day questions on like a random day. Number two is to learn what your calculator can do. Your calculator is more powerful than you think. I can guarantee that you don't know every single function and every single way that you can get a certain answer from a calculator which will make your life so so much easier for me personally and i think for a lot of exam boards i had two calculator papers and one non-calculator so you can get a lot of the marks from the calculator paper. So it's a really good idea to just sit down for like an hour or two and learn all the things that your calculator can do that you didn't realize that it can. For me personally, I had the Casio calculator. I'll put a picture of it up. And that's a calculator I use for my GCSEs. And there was so many features on there that I didn't realize I could actually use. So all in all, it's a really good idea to see what your calculator can do, which can help you save so much time in your exams as well. Tip number three is don't focus your time on making really pretty notes. Now, before you guys get angry, don't worry, I was a victim of this too in year 10. If you look at my Instagram, which is currently inactive at the moment, unfortunately, I have some pictures of like my notes from year 10. And you can just tell I spent so much time time and energy into making these notes and honestly I think I never looked at them again after making them which is so so useless so trust me math is not the subject that you should be note-taking for there are other subjects like maybe English literature that you could note-take for but math is definitely not one of them I would say the maximum sort of notes that you could make are things that either have like a set method because I know some questions have like a very set method on doing things like for example using the quadratic formula uh, that's one of them and also you could potentially make notes on like the physics -y aspect of GCSE maths like I know that we had to learn like the pressure force area equation and like the distance speed time equation so you could make notes on that if you wanted to but at the end of the day it's all about the questions and not really about the notes itself but definitely definitely focus more of your time on doing questions Questions and less of your time on making notes. Tip number four is to practice, practice, practice. I think that this doesn't even just go for GCSE maths, but like maths for any stage of your education, whether that be A level or even like key stage one. I think maths 
it's all about practice. It's all about doing questions and trying to reapply the same methods on different questions so that it engraves in your mind on what to do so that when you're faced with an unknown question in your exam, you know exactly what to do because you've done like a hundred questions beforehand. There's so, so many resources out there and I will be talking about some of them later on in this video and also putting some links down in the description box to help you guys. But I would say that there's so many resources available so you don't even have to like buy many if you don't want to. I would say there's loads of free resources available for GCSE Maths anyways. Also a side note real quick, if you found loads of resources, don't try and do all of them if you feel like you don't have enough time. I feel like I had this problem during GCSEs. I found like so many resources and in, on my to-do list, I would put all those resources down and I constantly felt like I was drowning because I was trying to do all of them. But just do it as much as you can and don't try and do all of them. Tip number five is a pretty straightforward tip and that is to watch videos on topics that you find quite confusing or things that you're constantly getting stuck on. I would recommend Corbin Maths for the videos as well. I think he explains things quite well. And there are other YouTube videos available online as well. Not even GCSE videos, but things that explain GCSE topics. But they might be for like a different curriculum around the world, which is the good thing about maths. There's so many videos available because maths is very universal and maths in another country might be the exact same as maths in the UK because it is the same sort of content. Also use worked examples to help you try and remember if there's like a method or if there's like a step-by-step -step way to do certain things. Using worked examples and YouTube videos can help you just try and again ingrain that method into your mind so that when it comes up in the exam you know exactly what steps to follow. Also if the YouTube videos don't make sense and nor do the worked examples go to your teacher because hopefully they'll be happy to help you out. Tip number six is to mark all your worksheets. I was very guilty of this in year 11. I would do so many questions, but I'd only end up marking like half of them. So I don't really know what happened with the other half ever. But marking is how you know what to improve on. And it's so important to mark your worksheets whenever you do them or any questions whenever you do them. And also be strict on yourself. Pretend the most strictest examiner is marking your paper. Did you write the U? units down did you have the steps laid out clearly if they are not there be a strict examiner to yourself so that in the exam if you do get a strict examiner you've already marked your papers that way so you won't feel like a complete shock if you see your grades i would say also write down what questions you're constantly getting wrong so that you can see a pattern so for example if you do like a past paper you could be like okay 2017 paper one question 13 and then write down what topic it was so like was it fractions was it about graphs was it about statistics was it about measurement what was it about and be a bit clear as well so that you can specifically see because instead of just writing fractions, you could write like fraction, addition, and subtraction instead of just fractions because then you'd have to cover all of it, if that makes sense. Tip number seven, I've kind of touched on already, but that is to focus on your weaknesses. This one goes especially for further maths because it is so, so difficult because some of these things you've never even heard of before. Like I remember before year 11 and year 10, I had never heard of differentiation and what dy over dx even was. So when I came to learn about it, it was a bit of a shock and I didn't really like it at first. Therefore, it's crucial to focus on your weaknesses, especially. What you could do for yourself and like if you want to have like a routine is you could try and cover these topics whenever you go over the corrections of the five a day as mentioned in tip number one. So when you're going over those corrections, you could also go over these ones and try and do like three, five questions for all of these topics that you're getting wrong. Tip number eight is to do everything timed. This is such a crucial tip because a lot of people just time themselves when they're doing past papers and they find timing really hard to grasp if they've just timed themselves to past papers. I would say even if you're doing the five a day, even if you're doing like just one question, which is just like worth one mark, time yourself because at the end of the day, your exams will be timed. You won't have all the time in the world to try and figure out this one question. So time yourself. Obviously, if you still don't get the answer within the time, try and still work it out untimed before you check the answer. But timing yourself is crucial. Tip number nine is to develop your problem solving skills, which is so, so important in maths. I think maths is pretty much all about logic and problem solving. And one way you can do this is by using Brilliant, which is the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant has thousands and thousands of interactive lessons in so many different areas such as maths, data analysis, programming and AI and it helps you learn by actually doing things. 
I would say with maths, a key concept of it is that there's no real like proper memorization of things and it's more just about solving the questions. And that is also a principle that Brilliant uses because Brilliant helps you build your problem solving skills and not just memorizing them. Also, as mentioned in this video as one of the tips, it's really important to do maths little and often every day. And you could do this by the five a day questions as I've mentioned, but also you can do this by Brilliant because learning a little bit every day, you can see so much growth over a long period of time, even if you're just putting in like five ten minutes of your time every day to doing some questions on brilliant brilliant also has lots and lots of content for maths and some of these are also gcse topics like vectors algebra geometry understanding graphs there's so many things that you can do on brilliant that can help you with your gcse exams as well to try everything brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days visit brilliant.org slash study lifestyles or scan the qr code on screen or you can click on the link in the description and you'll also get 20 percent off an annual premium membership so for tip number 10 i'm going to be telling you guys all the resources that i use for gcse maths firstly Old past papers are so, so important and no one really understands the importance of them because a lot of people do the past papers that are available on their exam board's website, which I would say is top priority. Do those before you do anything else if you're like coming up to your exams, but also doing old past papers can help a lot. Do see the differences between the old spec and the new spec so that you're not doing questions and trying so hard on questions that you don't even need to learn about. I used old past papers so much for further maths because my specification at the time it was completely new and they had no sittings before us we were kind of like the guinea pigs and we were the first people that sat the aqa nine to one grading of the further maths subject also physics and maths tutor is also so so helpful because there's so many things that they have collected and they're all like exam questions on different topic areas so if you want to focus on a specific area physics and math tutor is a place to go to as well also to add on top of that math genie also has loads of questions on specific topics so if you want to focus on specific topics also check out math genie dr frost math is also really good i think that some schools do use this i know mine tried using it for a bit but we didn't have like a massive emphasis on it but dr frost math is also really helpful and there's so so many questions they have like a proper question bank and everything so definitely check that out too as mentioned corbin math is so good and the five a day on there is also very helpful as mentioned but they have like worksheets and stuff on the website as well. So do check those out as well. Also Maths Made Easy MME is also a really good website for GCSEs as well. Those are like the main resources that I used. Besides websites, if you just search up GCSE Math, there's so many resources that comes up. But besides the websites themselves, another resource that's really good is the CGP books on maths, like the practice question books are so good. I used it for further maths especially because obviously I didn't have that many questions available on the internet because we were the first people sitting the paper. CGB also has like a grade eight to nine booster book. I'll put a picture up of it. Um, it's what I used and I found it really helpful because they were all filled with like really complex questions that could come up in the exam. So all in all, it was a good investment. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I wish you guys good luck for all your exams coming up and I'll see you guys later. Bye!